Hello, how are you? Uh, welcome to Co Cuéntame USA. I have to say it in English. Uh, tell me USA. That's what it means in Spanish and English. Uh, my name is Moncho Camano. And uh, this is like a new chapter in my channel, my uh, YouTube channel. And uh, our guest is going to be like a canary in a coal mine. So she goes in first. And if everything goes well, we'll keep doing it. Why not? Right? No pressure. <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> there are worse things that could happen to me, right? So I'm more than happy to uh, have my first conversation with, uh, I think it's one of the best female uh, singers uh, from women in the metal scene. Oh, That's thank mine. you. <laughs> That's what I think. And I usually write. So um, we have someone in across the ocean. I'm here in New Jersey, and I believe... Our guest is in Germany, and her name is Elina Cirilla. Yes. And she's across, the, she's in Germany, and I believe uh, in a beautiful city. Is it Regensburg? Yes, yes. I'm right? in, in the heart of Bavaria here. <laughs> right. There is no ocean, but nice rivers and trees, yeah, I think. Exactly. Right? Yes. And, and some beautiful cathedrals, probably Gothic. I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah. That very I'm not sure. Beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. Right? Yes. Well, uh, I want to say Lina is the, like the founder and the, the front woman for the English melodic metal band uh, Angel Nation, right? Mm -hmm. and, which previously was called Enkeli Nation, I think, right? Yes. Enkeli Nation. And also she's known for uh, singing in another band, well-known symphonic metal band uh, called Leap Size. Uh, not a small endeavor, I could say. Uh, and I think she plays a keyboard when it's needed, right? She plays piano and has yeah. a beautiful soprano voice, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk to her about the new uh, album from uh, Angel Nation. Uh, it's called Antares. And um, to tell you the truth, I had to figure out, find out what, what it meant because I didn't know. Now I know. Uh, so her new album is called Antares. And uh, well, I would like to start... Uh, just for people that don't know who Elena is, uh, maybe people in the Appalachian Mountains or in Wyoming, someplace lost in the US, <laughs> know a little bit more about her beginnings. I think she grew up in Finland, right? Uh, Elena, you were, uh, you grew up in Finland, right? That's your... Uh, yes, your... I'm, uh, I'm Finnish, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I grew up in Helsinki, in the capital of Finland. And... Uh, I moved to London when I was 23 and I lived there for 10 years. So those are kind of like uh, almost my second home, London, I would call. Yeah. Mm. And then four years ago, I moved to Germany. So been all over the world a little bit. <laughs> right. Uh, and you grew up in a very uh, musical environment, right? You were, uh, I guess, breathing music uh, daily. <laughs> Yes, yes. My um, both of my parents are uh, classical musicians, and uh, also my brother, and most of my other family members too. So, it was kind of like the environment I grew up. Yeah, sure. Right. So you decided, like you said, to move to England in two thousand eight. To that was to study uh, music or some other uh, career. Yes, yes. I uh, finished my degree in, in Helsinki and then I was thinking what my options would be and uh, I wanted to, I was always writing music so I wanted to still explore other, uh, you know, aspects of my voice. So hmm. I moved to London to study all the other styles. So I did this one year very intensive course that went through okay. all the styles. Yeah. Hmm. So what happened in England? You, you were supposed to be there for a year and then uh, they uh, something there right, right, in the in the in the air that kept you for ten years. The... Yeah, yeah. I mean, originally it was more personal reasons why I okay. stayed there, but mm. then um, I started the band uh, Inclination back then. So it was just I met obviously new people and I just got very integrated there and I loved it. I loved the scene. It's mm. it's a great city, but it's also a tough city to live in. It's very expensive. So right. Oh, and the yeah. weather is it was the is this a big difference in Finland, F Finnish weather and uh, British weather? Is there more rain in England and more fog and what is it? Um, well, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, I think Finland is still colder uh, in the winter most of the time. So mm. there is. 
I think we only had one snow when I lived in, in London in 10 years, for mm. example. So that's a difference. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's kind of similar. Kind of More sunny days in uh, Finland, in Finland, or uh, mm, difficult so, so. to compare. It depends. It can be very nice, or it can be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, so who helped you out to set up your first bed in Kelly Nation? You had a lot of help. How do you like decide? Like, I want to do this. I want to set up a van. Uh, I have a lot of friends. Maybe they want to uh, be part of it, the project. How did uh, this come um, out about? Well, I mean, it was, uh, it's a bit of a long story, but if I tell it very shortly, hmm. um, I was writing some music and uh, I had a teacher who encouraged me to continue writing some more music. And then, um, because I really loved the rock and metal scene. So I, I kind of, I loved the music, but I always felt like, okay, well, my voice is never going to fit this music. So what can I do? And I wanted to write something that I felt okay that this would fit my voice and mm -hmm. have this contrast still the heaviness and and uh, so that's why I decided then to start a band and uh, that you're very right about that that I first got some friends joining me and right. that's why you know the lineup changed a lot and we were working hard in the in right. the bottom of the scene trying to get somewhere and then steadily it got a little bit more uh, steady the lineup and. And, right. You know, it's it's always difficult in the start if you're alone because I know I know how have... difficult it is to start a band. <laughs> Plus, you have a lot of ideas, and you're still like unsure if you go this way, the other way, right? I guess what style am I doing? And yeah, things. yeah, that's true. And I think it's still there, though. I mean, I really like to experiment with different kind of right. styles, so it's never like just one thing. The whole album. Right. I noticed that in the the three albums that you brought yeah. from Angel Nation. The first one is called Tears of Lost, but uh, it, it was under the name and Kelly Nation, right? Yes, correct. Uh, then you decided to change uh, the the name of the the band. Um, I think you just made a, re a reissue of this album, right? Uh, Tears of Lost, just not too long ago, like a re a reissue really? with yeah. three yeah. bonus yeah. tracks, actually... three more. Yeah, it's actually coming out on the 7th of October. So um, we have the pre-sales going on now for that. Mm. And it will have the new band name on, on the cover. So a little mm. bit something else as well, some bonus tracks and, and other material inside. But it's a reissue of the first album. Right, which I heard um, was a very youthful uh, sound, I think. <laughs> And your voice changed a lot since the, your first album too. Could be, yeah, could yeah, be. Yeah, very useful, um, like a lot of, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, that was in 2014 when this uh, album came out, Thirst, Fears of Lost, right? 2014. Yes. And then and then it, it passed like around uh, maybe three years uh, and you, the, the next album came in 17. Eon, right? That was a very different album, I, I believe, it, when I heard both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it has 10 songs. And one of the songs that's one of the most popular songs that you put out so far in uh, Angel Nation, I believe, is uh, Burn the Witch, right? That one is one of the most popular ones I, I've, I heard, I think. Could be at least it yeah. was kind of one of the, it was the video song, so it got more attention. More for that reason as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a bit heavier as well. It had a little bit different kind of vibe. So. Right, right. I also like uh, Wonder Who You Were. That's a good song, uh -huh. great song. Yeah, great song from that album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great album. It was a great album. That's very, very nice. But um, the new album is very, very totally different. It's, it's, um, it was released not long ago, a couple of months ago, uh, Antares which, like I said, I had no idea what it meant, uh, is the brightest star in the constellation of Scorpius, which I have no idea. What can I say? Just... Yeah, yeah, so it's a star, yeah. basically, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. it's very, very, very different. It's uh, less keyboards than compared with the other albums, right? Uh, I think the first album had a lot of 80s in it, like a lot of some, a lot of synthesizers, some, like yeah. the second one also, but yeah, there is like a vibe that I, yeah, I would say that maybe the first one had a little bit more gothic elements as well. Some of the songs, right, yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit 
darker in mm. a way, a little bit less. It had more keys, maybe not so much 80s influences, a little bit, but then in uh, Eon, definitely, for example, Enough is Enough is very 80s sounding song. Right. And then I think in this Antares, there's also more of those, but the keys are in general more the background on this album. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like in the background, like you said. But it's a very, very more stronger. It's like heavy, more heavy, heavy sounds, less keyboards, I think. Yes. Uh, a little no symphonic whatsoever, I think. Um, a little bit. There is some couple of songs I've a little bit used some stuff, but not much. Yeah, not yeah. Much. very, very it's very different than the two previous ones. You wanna do like you said, everything has uh, has to be a uh, move, and it has to be uh change new sounds different uh opinions i guess and plus you have new uh new uh people in the band right uh the bass player and now you got a new bass player i believe right yeah i mean we did uh obviously antares was still made with julia um right. and uh we had new guitarist george for this album so that will also always change the sound a little bit it was conscious decision though that we wanted it to be a bit more guitar driven we wanted the band to be in the center more and not mm. so much keyboards because obviously we we don't even have a keyboard player so right <laughs> and i i don't want this symphonic sound so i really wanted to be more modern sounding synths and mm. stuff like that but who plays those synths do you play the synths uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah right you're in charge and the piano right yes <laughs> Yeah, like I said, it's very strong. It has very uh, a lot of guitar riffs that I like on this album. Right. Uh, but I really like Ian. I tell you the truth, uh, yeah. Ian. I think it's it's a great album. Also. Very yes. Good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Nothing to <laughs> nothing to say uh, bad about that album. Uh, I, on this album, I like a lot of songs. There is a lot of songs I like, but uh, the the most one, the best one for me. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, the last one of the album, the last track. Uh, uh -huh. and I want to know a, a, a little bit about this this song, where the future lies. Um, it's I mean, it's based on uh, something to do with your grandma. It's a story or old story. No, what that is it be, about? Uh, way back home is. I um, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking no. of the other song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confusing yeah. you. I'm yeah, thinking no of the, the the other song. No, no, no. I'm talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, where the future lies. Where the future lies. Yeah. The, so that's the one you want to talk about. Yeah. The one I'm talking yeah. about. Where the future uh -huh. lies. Uh, yeah. Because it, tell me about that song because it has a story behind it, right? Well, yeah. I mean, all of the songs always have stories behind them. It's this. This was. I think I wrote it quite in the beginning of the, when I started writing the album, I think it was maybe a third song or something like that, that I worked on. And uh, it was in the phase that I was very um, enthusiastic and I wanted to, you know, just, I, I had so long I couldn't write. I had kind of like a writer's block or something and hmm. I got into it again and I was so excited and, you know, I wanted to just bring out this, this, um, yeah, <laughs> You know the future like it's it's kind of ours to take in a way if right. if we just dare to go there it's a it's a very positive song in that say but it's also always comes with this uh, tiny uncertainty you know you're a little bit scared okay you know how, how it's going to be this time and um how people will perceive things and right uh yeah it's it's combination of of a lot of things i guess <laughs> Hmm. And for this album, you didn't have to regroup, right, in the studio? You did all that remotely, Is most of yeah, it? Yeah, it was during the pandemic, um, so it was kind of also, <laughs> we had to do it that way. But hmm. luckily, it is possible nowadays to do that pretty efficiently. Right. So what, what was your mood during that recording? Because it was during the pandemic. Is that because, is that a reason why the album sounds like this? Or it had nothing to Actually, do with it? No, actually, I wrote these songs were written already before. So in 2019, um, okay. I started writing and, uh, for example, this song was written in 2019. So it had nothing to do with pandemic. <laughs> but, okay. but a lot of things can be, of course, you know, you can right. think that it could fit in the, and that's, that's the way it should be. It's great. Yeah, when people <laughs> listen, they always, you know. Yeah. 
and I, I guess when you do when you do your writing, you sometimes you don't connect like the dots, so you get to make a little open for the people to uh, interpret the song itself. Of course, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That's the best way. Right. I also saw a couple of those videos that you put out for for this album, uh, Suraf and out of sight, out of mind. Uh, I believe in March, uh, those videos are on, that's when um, they came out. Yeah, March and April, I think. Oh, I'm getting confused now already. <laughs> yeah, well, March or April, right. I, 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 at least one of them is March, uh, I yeah. think. Uh, uh, and both were recorded in uh, England? In, um, yes. Done? Both, because the band uh, lives there. You are the, the you're not, you're, you are in Germany, but those the other members are in uh, in England? Yes, yeah. So it was, I guess, easier for 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 you to move there and not them to go to uh, Germany. Yeah, for sure. And we had the we wanted to work with the photographer or filming guy or, or director who already worked with us uh, with the Burn the Witch. So okay. he's of course based in in England in London. Hmm. So that's who, also did, who did the the this beautiful artwork uh, on the album? Because all oh, the albums are beautiful. The, the, they look yeah, great. that's um, uh, Jobert, I uh, have to say his name right now, Jobert Melo. <laughs> what is he, yeah, Portuguese? So, it sounds yeah, like Portuguese yeah, he's, or he's Brazilian. Brazilian. Yeah, he's Brazilian. Oh, okay. And, uh, he's worked with um, multiple bands, uh, bands before and also he did some artwork for shirts uh, for us before. And yeah, we just wanted to continue and see how it would come out with him and and yeah we, we had some drafts back and forth and then i think the right. final version is is great oh okay uh i was gonna ask you a question regarding the 80s music because you weren't born in the 80s so i mean you weren't you weren't like uh 14 or 15 in the 80s but what's in the what's there that you really like the 80s sound yeah that's a good question i mean i was born in the 80s obviously <laughs> yeah. but um yeah at that point i actually wasn't really listening to any kind of rock or or metal or anything right only, only my brother was uh, he had a kiss cassette i remember seeing the kiss the, with the pain and the and double I, oh like, okay scary okay. i was like oh what is this right. and um and then um doors he was on queen he was uh, listening a lot of queen so those kind of bands, I it's from my childhood as well. Uh, but okay. then later on, I mean, it's just I don't know what it is. I just really love it. It's it's the kind of <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong, but it's simple. Like there's simplicity about the music, but still it has these little hooks and everything that really catches you. And the music, I don't know. It's just I really love it. <laughs> well, like I'm, I'm in the I was in the eighties. I was like, I don't know, I don't want to say, but I, I don't look like a <laughs> teenager. So, but that was my music, the eighties. That's like, it's like all those synthesizers and keyboards. But I also uh -huh. like punk and heavy and hard, uh -huh. hardcore music, everything. But yeah. there's something there, like people are like, oh, I'm stuck in the eighties. Well, sometimes I guess you're stuck in the eighties because it's, it was it's a good time. I don't know, I had a great time in the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was gonna. Talk a little bit about leaf size because uh, that's how I first knew about you, yes. leaf size. To tell you the truth, so uh, I really I saw you live also. So one time oh, I did. Okay. So we're gonna talk a, a little bit about that. Not, not that it's important that I went and saw you the first time, but you know, you joined oh. uh, leaf size in 2016, right? Because uh, yeah. when you decided to join uh, leaf size. How did this come about? I guess you already knew the band. You already knew what type of music they did. You know, uh, tell me how how they so. I, I don't know. I know Alex uh, Alexander Kroll is one of the main guys there in the band. How how who call who call you or how did you get into <laughs> decided to join the band because it's something different. The, of what you did is a big band. It travels all over the world and. It's, it's a big endeavor, I think. How, how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, it was um, actually we were playing the uh, same festival with Angel Nation back in 2015, the Aims of Darkness in, in UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, I think they heard me for the first time. They saw the band and then uh, we were supporting Leaves Eyes in London. Okay. Uh, I believe the same year in maybe in November or something like that. And uh, then we just met there briefly as well. Um, 
But then next year, the following year in March, I just got a message uh, from Alex mm -hmm. and he called me and um, basically they didn't tell me anything. They just uh, asked me if I would come to Germany and sing mm -hmm. some songs. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> So I just went there knowing I didn't know what it was about. Yeah. And uh, I sang those songs, and then they finally told me what the situation was, and um, that right. they were then asking me if I would join join the band. And yeah, that's how it went. That's then. how it was fast, yeah. like a quick, quicky, yeah. like a quick one, right? Not not yeah. much to think about. I didn't have time to think. No, no, it was. I think in ten days we already had the first festival in in Indonesia, so yeah, what, it was pretty. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure for sure. Like it's a bit, a lot of hours in a plane to Indonesia. Like where am I going? Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, how you? Ha I don't know. In my mind, I'm thinking signing like a big a contract with lawyers and this. I gotta sign this. <laughs> I don't know how that did that will work out. Are you just cut your pinky? He cuts your pinky and it's like we seal it with blood and that's it. Don't worry about it. Everything will be all right. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> Here's the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what happens. So yeah. that was a big, uh, big thing. So I wanna do. I wanna say that. In 2016, you came to the United States also uh, when you did that tour. The, yes. The, right. So that's where I saw you, the Kings of Kings tour um, in New Jersey, here in New Jersey. So I saw you, but um, I think it was in November, November, I believe. In New Jersey. Yes, there was a long tour, November, December. Actually, in November. the first tour I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I think... I th <laughs> I was I was ready to go to a record store to tell you the truth in, in Jersey because you guys were you were gonna play uh, acoustic I think uh, before doing the 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 gig I think oh. it was something like that but then they changed it for some reason the the guy that uh, the record store said oh he's not they're not gonna do any music they're just gonna sign records so oh, yeah. I don't know it's just probably 2016 is a long time ago so. Uh, I yeah. decided not to go to that because I, I then something happened and said, "Well, I'll just go into the concert. I, I won't go." But uh, that was, I believe, in November 11th. I think it was. Okay, I, I, okay. I kept Good it in my head. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, you went to Starland Ballroom in New Jersey, Starland. Uh -huh. Okay. And you had a, a very. I have no idea. It was. I thought it was. I was going to see a different singer. To tell you the truth. And then, ah. <laughs> like, who is she? she was yeah, like a, so I was surprised. Yeah, I it see. was a surprise to tell you the truth. <laughs> and you had a, like a tight leather outfit, and you, and you sang beautifully. And I think you played nine or ten songs. I don't, you know, it's been a while, but it was beautiful. That's the first time I saw the band. To tell you okay. Those. Yeah, and that was you. And like, who is she? I'm like asking my friend. I don't know. <laughs> it's like I gotta find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The news weren't really out, maybe. right? I was still, you know. Plus, I listen to all types of music. I like metal and heavy metal, death melodic metal, everything. But you know, you're not up to everything. What's going on? No, of course not. It's impossible yeah. to keep track with everything. So it was the first time, and I would like to hopefully to see you again soon. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So how are preparations going for those tours? Because I believe uh, you're going to do some Angel Nation uh, gigs in the UK, right? Yes. Yeah. In October, we have four dates. Four days. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're doing Scotland also, I think, right? Scotland? Yeah. Yeah. Fine. I've actually never been there. So I'm really looking forward to We go to Edinburgh. Yeah. Right. So you're going to do a couple of shows there. Uh, Birmingham, I think, and Manchester, right? Yes. Exactly, London, and then of course London. Yeah. Right. Um, so, um, and also you're gonna do uh, the with uh, Leap Size, right? The tour is it starts in November. Is it correct? Is yes, it correct there is the tour also uh, with with Leap Size in November, December. Yeah. And you'll be doing a, like an European tour, right? That's it. Yeah, that's also a European tour. Yeah. Right. Any plans for coming to the U.S. then and uh, the next year? Uh, yes, or... yeah, there is, and there has been for a long time. It's just um, always, you know, so many things have to click hmm. for that to happen. But uh, um, we really hope it will actually happen this time. <laughs> I hope. I want to see you. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, I was going to ask you, uh, there is uh, someone that I really enjoy also listening to, and because she appears in the Leap Size album, uh, Clementine, mm -hmm. the honey, uh, a Black Butterfly, one of the songs that you do together. Uh, I uh, I like them a lot, but I, I now that I'm thinking about, I miss their uh, visions of, of Atlantic's uh, tour because that's something during the pandemic they were here also, and I was going to see them. And then they canceled the show, and ah she, yes, uh, the same week that was supposed to show up. I think she had a lot of logistic problems coming back to Europe during that time. I think yeah, I'm not sure. Be. Yeah. So when you she recorded that. Uh, song with you when did that happen after march the it was done in 2020 right yes 2020 um i was in the studio in march uh, for a month hmm. and uh, yes i believe she came during that period yeah yeah she she was able to come which was really good and uh, we actually recorded the song in the studio and mm -hmm. also filmed back then right nice, um, nice the, the material video. that was used for the video um, and yeah, it was really great, great working with her. We all obviously we toured with uh, with them before, right. so right, I know right. her. But but it was really great. Yeah. Hmm. You do a lot of collaboration. You did some this year, right? Also with a band uh, from ex uh, from Chile. I'm sorry, uh, Chaos Magic, right? With Caterina. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was another very nice collaboration. There should yeah, be yeah. a video coming out for that one as well. So um, looking forward to that one. Um, and then I did the Orden Ogun uh, co cooperation as well. They have a whole album coming out now okay. with singers singing their songs from the previous album. So that mm. was also fun. Mm. And there's some other stuff coming as well. <laughs> right. You, you've also teamed up with the Vivaldi uh, Metal Project, yes, right? Yes, that's also one. Yeah. Yeah. Like the classic. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that, that you do a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was already a while ago, though. Um, mm. But it took a bit of time for that to come out. But yeah, that was that was good as well. Yeah, and also do a lot of uh, extra work with Atrocity, right? With the band. Uh, yeah, I was you really do that, nice. which is yeah, very, yeah. you know, death metal style is very, very heavy, very heavy. Yes, but they have these um, kind of, they use uh, classical voices, so mm. I was doing some of that, and then I had a really fun time doing these crazy um, sound effects, uh, mm. so I was doing all kinds of horrible sounds, and it was really fun, <laughs> so that's also me on one of the it's songs. It's you, so it fits perfectly, right? <laughs> yeah, that was fun. And then you have other, some extra activities, which... Uh, uh, you were a teacher also, right? Because uh, you do uh, uh, singing, you do uh, singing, uh, I don't know, if online also, but uh, in, a, in a place, so someplace in Germany, that's what you're doing, like uh, in a school, you do your yes. teaching, vocal coach? Yes, I'm, I'm teaching um, at the moment. Actually, I was very lucky that I, um, I, had a, I was moving to Regensburg and mm -hmm. uh, I got the job, or actually two jobs, during the pandemic. So I was very, very uh, lucky and I was able to work through the whole pandemic online a little while, a few months, but still uh, working. And now it's back to normal, so already for a while. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I've been teaching since I started studying, actually, so a long time, but yeah. now much more. And uh, I really actually enjoy it more now. It's really bringing a lot for myself as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, exploring always these things and you have to always find other ways <clears throat> to uh, approach uh, different problems or problems because people, you know, they have different challenges with their voices. Right. So you always have to be on your toes and be creative. So it's mm. great. I love is it, it. Is it easier to deal with your students or your band members? <laughs> Sorry? What's easier? Is it easier to deal with your students or, ah. or the band members? <laughs> oh, they're both very easy to deal with. <laughs> very nice relationships. <laughs> yeah. I see also some videos of yours. Uh, very different from the type of music you do, uh, you know, like uh, doing Handel's uh, Almira and uh, some uh, classical uh, music and uh, uh, 
Oh, Sole Mio, I heard you sing uh, Neapolitan song. Uh, you do a lot of classical uh, concerts also, right? Sometimes you show up in different places in Germany. Right? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we had a period we were um, doing a few concerts with my sister-in-law. She's a pianist. Uh, and that was really nice project. I didn't then really have time <laughs> to do mm. it all. It wasn't even possible during the pandemic. There were some plans, but it didn't then come, you know, didn't happen but uh yeah i still sing also just when i practice i also sing classical music sometimes because you uh, got a degree right you got a degree yeah for, yeah yeah, a long time yeah I, I used to um do operas and everything but but yeah it was it's it's you know it's part of my you can hear it in my voice of course i mean course, but i course. i don't really sing fully classical style except in some very very high bits in in leaves eyes Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of mix it a little bit, but mm. yeah, that's that's kind of where I started the singing. Right. It's like yeah. a building block. Yes. For you, um, you put a lot of all your own life experience into your uh, your uh, your songs. Are you more like an avid reader or a film watcher, if we could say? Um, it. I think it's a little bit. Um, like I, I go through periods where I read a lot mm. and actually now I, I'm going through that kind of period I've been reading a lot lately um, mm. and then I don't watch so many films um, mm. I watch more like series and, and stuff like that um, but I, I think it's just a balance between both I would mm. say they're like a help uh, like a tool like a, a tool in your toolbox for that helps you out in the writing process, I guess. Ah, yeah. with the writing. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about the writing. Like direct, oh, okay, sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, whew. I don't think it. It, my, it depends. It depends on the song, but okay. uh, mostly it comes maybe more of my actual experiences in in, in life and everything and mm. and thoughts. And sometimes it's just like Antara started from this crazy vision of. Of this army of angels of the seraph and you know marching and, okay. and it's just like visions and, and ideas and then they kind of combine with my ex life experiences i guess right. yeah so it's a bit of a mishmash some are more fictional some are more uh, uh factual mm. when you do your writing uh like just to write a song does it may it may take a month it may take a week or you you do half and you come back later how does that work that's Always, really every different. song is yeah. different every yeah everything in between what you just said i mean sometimes mm. it goes really quickly and sometimes it's just you maybe do a little section you have one idea and then you mm. can't really continue it for a long time and then maybe you come back and then you come up with something or yeah mm. it's 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 not really like a you know, a, a formula that you can always do. Right, do so you have a lot of writer's block? Like there are days that you cannot do anything? Like I'm not into this, I'll leave yeah. it for next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's why it took so long to write Antares because I was really struggling um, right. for a long time. I, I didn't, I just didn't feel it and I can't force it. I really can't force myself right. to write a song. It just doesn't happen, so. Right. Do you show your writings to someone before you decide to put it out or and say, oh, what do you think about this or that? And they say, and, you know, Elena, I, I don't know, you didn't have breakfast this morning. Maybe you should have breakfast and write again. No, <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I mean, sometimes I, I showed like the very early demos as well, where it was only keyboards, like just the rough structure of the song, like my keyboards, my voice, uh, demo vocals. Right. I showed it to some people and, and sometimes they had really, really good feedback uh, that was really useful for me as well. Right. Um, and then, you know, sometimes when you're really unsure, like, mm, I'm not sure about this. And then someone is like, oh, this is really great. And, you know, it gives you also a little bit of like, OK, if you say so, maybe you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, at least you want to work on it more and not leave it completely. The yeah. idea. So you do a lot. You use a notebook to write a lot there or you have it like uh, all in digital sound and some hard drive, I don't know, in the computer or you got things all over the place. Or... Uh, mostly it's, of course, on the computer. Yeah. And then I have uh, my phone where I always want to uh, have ideas. I, I just sing like something and I have all these little recordings of my ideas. <laughs> 
I have a question when you dream and uh, if you have a crazy dream at night and you do you wake up and write something or it's like ah, the next day you forget or does that happen? Um, well, actually, it's a funny thing. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned the song uh, Wonder Who You Are. Yes. Uh, that's actually based on uh, dreams, that song. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's about having weird dreams. I have a lot of weird dreams. So, <laughs> but, um, but I don't think I ever wrote a song in my dream. It was just the topic that came into that song. But um, uh, sometimes when I was trying to fall asleep, I had to pick up my phone and, and quickly record something because I had right. some idea and I had to get it out. <laughs> I'm thinking like you have some idea, you put it down and you think it's great. And then the next day you listen to it and say, it ain't that good. I don't know. What yeah, I that happens also a lot, of course. Right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was going to ask you uh, something totally different. Well, regarding your and uh, when you're on stage, what, when was the what was the worst moment of your uh, on stage so far with the uh, uh, maybe with a crazy fan, you know, I don't know, uh, that had to be restrained, you have digestive problems and <laughs> you have to leave and come back later, or you have problems with sounds, you forgot the words to a song, I don't know, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you in the on stage? Well, I mean, I think almost all of those things you just mentioned happened, not all of them, but some. all of them together. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for example, one time we were, um, it was in the USA and we were, you know, one club and the, um, how do you say, the, the Wi-Fi or whatever, the connection was so bad okay. that when I got on stage, my ears were just, <laughs> and I couldn't hear nothing like nothing, i can't just... hear anything so that's of course a little bit awkward but it's not terrible uh, mm. and then also for example um full metal cruise i was we were playing the pool deck and uh, it's to the last song blazing waters where i have to go and start the song with the intro on my own it's very okay. quiet and um it was uh, windy uh, and I was a bit, you know, your nose starts to run and you're like a bit stiff. Right. And I went, I walked on stage and I inhaled and I inhaled all the slime and it went <laughs> straight into my, my throat and, and I could, I was just coughing through the whole intro. I couldn't sing at all. That wasn't, <laughs> so that wasn't example, fun. Stuff like that. And I also stepped on a bassist uh, switch one time, switched off his bass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all like, it's not so bad. <laughs> Could be worse. I've seen worse stories. Yeah, so. I didn't, you know, I didn't fall off the stage oh, ever right. or anything, so. <laughs> like, no, nothing, no no burning hair, nothing, nothing no, like that. No, but I got a, a sword here. Someone swung the sword into my, oh. uh, into my eye one time. So uh, you talk about leaf size? What are those? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't Alex. <laughs> it wasn't Alex. <laughs> that, that would no, be a no. bad thing. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how his personality is, but I don't think he would go that far. <laughs> no, but because he has the helmet and he's swinging, right. sometimes says, we always stay away from him. <laughs> it's a hazard. <laughs> it's a, you gotta be careful with him. He's he's uh, the producer in your album, right? Nantaris is he is uh, not the mixing? He no, he, he was mixing and mastering. Mixing, yeah, yeah. mixing, right? Uh, he's he's is he uh well the band Leap Size is being uh, going on since two thousand three, right? Uh, the yes, band, I right? think so. Yeah. He started there with the, or oh, he's joined later. Uh, that I don't well, remember. He's the, he's the founder, yeah. He's the he's founder, right? The founders, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there being uh, also changes in their. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Lately, uh, there is a, they got, you guys got a new guitar player, right? Yes. Yes. Wait, look. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when you do this uh, coming tour, you do in the, the last biking. Tour is it is it called the last yeah. like, from the yeah. album right two thousand yes. uh, twenty. It's a very yeah. uh, very uh, it's not a long album. I listened to it a lot of times. It has to uh, comes. I bought the the two discs. Comes with the two discs, the music, the A and B, and um, very historic. He likes to read a lot of uh, books, right, and learn yeah. about history of different countries and. Yeah, Going I mean, back this, in time one, and, right. this one is a, is a proper concept album. So it's, right. it's about the Harald, uh, right. the last Viking. So that was a, 
that's why he did really a lot of research also for this. this yeah, album. he does a lot of research. He does all the research, right? No, no, he does everything, all the research, or he uh, there is people that helps uh, that help them out. No, he does it. I mean, he's of course he's been in the scene in the in the whole historic or, or Viking scene for a long time already, and he's always been interested in this this mm. topics and, and all the Norse mythology and everything that was always part of Link's eyes. So right. uh, yeah, he does that. He does. He has his books, and and uh, I'm not sure what all the things he does, but yeah. He does. But you learn a lot from him, I guess, and from not that because I don't yeah. think we were into that before, right? Sure, sure. I mean, it's it's uh, history is interesting, and and right. all these stories that sagas. I mean, they're not always, of course, they're not always like completely maybe historic. Of course, uh, it's actually true, but but uh, but most of it is based on true, right? What, what actually happened, and it's yeah, really because when people listen to your albums, you learn a lot. If you like that, you know, yeah, you, you want to find out about the songs and what are they about and all that. I, I like doing that, you know. I just don't like listening to music and that's it and go there. Yeah, sure. I want to find out who they are, what they do, and you know, it's more more interesting to find out. Uh, so, uh, uh. Like I said, you're gonna do the European tour, um, and leap size, I believe, it's starting November 23rd in Germany. Yes, I think that's the first day. Then they, you know, you're going to Switzerland and I don't know, Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. all yeah, those it's countries, be Belgium, Germany, but yeah, yeah, Netherlands and all that. Uh, yes. No, no Spain, I think, right? No, nothing no, in Spain. No, nothing in Spain. No, yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it wasn't. Uh, we hope, of course, we hope to come back there as well. Right. I'm just saying it's because I'm from Spain. Not, not that I was gonna be there, but yeah, I, I was. I always like metal bands to go there. I don't know. Yeah. Of <laughs> so, um, uh, it was uh, fun. I, I have a, a couple more questions, and uh, that's about it. Uh, I don't want to keep you there for a long time. No, today is no, uh, uh, Sunday. Yet. Sunday is probably a beautiful day in Germany. <laughs> well, it's pretty rainy at the moment. So oh, it is. It's oh, fine. <laughs> don't tell me that. Come on. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> here it's very. It's gonna be a nice day today here in the United States. Here in Jersey, uh -huh. very nice. No rain and lovely weather. But uh, uh, well, that's good for you. <laughs> that's good for me. <laughs> so <laughs> I was gonna say, I hope to see you, uh, the United States, that you guys come uh, because uh, I don't. I don't know about. Uh, your band, uh, Angel Nation. If you one day you show up in the United States with your band, who knows? It's, it's a lot of could, anything could happen. But I know you probably. I'll see we we leave size. Uh, I think hopefully. Yeah, right? I mean it's it's always um, it's quite difficult for bands to come to you as because you need to you know the visas and and all yeah. the everything is very expensive. So these Americans, uh, yeah, these yeah. Americans. So it's not so simple, unfortunately. But right. of course, if if there's a possibility, I would always love to come. Yeah. 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 I thank you very much. Um, so um, I was gonna ask you one more thing, and um, a lot of people when you uh, join uh, Leap Size, uh, a lot of your fans from uh, Angel Nation, they thought that Angel Nation was over, that you were not gonna go back to that, and you're gonna just stay in live size and that was it but your intention is to keep going that uh, your project right angel nation is not going anywhere right well i mean yeah that's the we recorded ian during that period like i think it was it came out 2017 so it was during the time that i joined live size right. of course i was i was recording that album and right. uh, i always had the intention to keep writing because i love writing music and i love mm. writing these kind of stuff that maybe you know just experiment with things and and like there's some songs that mi mixes and matches all kinds of stuff right uh, and i i like doing that as well so it gives me creative it's, it's more like your personal project yeah and, right it's something you, that you got more input on the van yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just um, I I wanted to keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, 
do you have uh, any songs like uh, Stuck in a Drawer that it will come out in a future album for Angel Nation? You have a uh, stuff written down or Well, I mean, yeah, there's always things I'm working on, but at the moment uh, it's a little bit more focused on the upcoming, we, we are actually in the process of writing the new Leaf Size album. Mm. So that's maybe the main focus at the moment. And then okay. also Antares only came out in April. So right. I'm, I'm looking forward to singing those songs live right. and uh, hopefully also in Europe and, and, you know, just to enjoy this. Okay. You know, it was a, a lot of work. To, yeah. To there's a lot of work happen. coming. I don't know how you're going to do it. No, October, November, December. It's like, it, it would be like nonstop, right? Yeah, but I'm only having four days with, with uh, Angel Nation. So it's, it's not really that much. Uh, yeah, but I mean, once you start with leap sizes, like don't stop for a while. Uh, well, I mean, we we had like maybe a couple of uh, tours per year. Uh, mm. And it wasn't, I mean, it's not like we're on the road all the time. Right. So I think it was pretty good balance, like okay. in terms of everything. Do you like traveling like in buses and stuff, planes? Or it's something that's not the worst thing for you. You like singing, you like being on stage for like two or an, an hour or two, and that's where you enjoy the most. But then when you have to go back to the bus or the airports, that's really tough for you. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, it's not definitely not the favorite part <laughs> for me um, because I sleep really badly. Uh, it's difficult to sleep on the bus. And so far, almost every tour, I got really ill. So okay. it's always re really tough. It's, so it's, it's a tough. challenge for you. Yeah. How do you, how you keep your uh, your vocal cords running? Uh, is well, there I a mean, special uh, drink, a special uh, potion that you drink, or I don't know, or just water or lemon? I don't know. What is yeah, that? I mean, it's it's actually more about like you know, I don't really drink alcohol, and I don't. I try to you know get sleep as much as I can. Right. Drink, eat well. I was also going to the gym, doing some, you know, keep keeping fit, and it's just I'm trying to relax and enjoy it as much as you can. I mean, I love, the, like you said, I love performing. I love everything. It's just the traveling part sometimes can be tough. Right. Um, so, but you know, it comes with it. So, <laughs> how do you feel when you get back home? Like, after, I don't know, after like a month of going everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's and you get like, home and you say, no, I got to get the broom and clean the, the kitchen. I said, I don't know. I got to do this. <laughs> totally different than what I was doing while I was uh, out. <laughs> yeah, that is true. It is like you get kind of, it gets a little bit of time to get used to the touring life. And then right. you get used to it. And then you come back and you need to get used to not being on tour right. uh, but that, that's why it's fun because then you have you know the balance it's it's uh you know your life is kind of so, right so now you're like looking forward to the the, yeah. the tours exactly you're going back on the road you're going to meet a lot of people different yes. bands and like uh all friends that you meet i guess in some places exactly. you show up. right well i don't want to I just want to say uh, I thank Elena for uh, showing up in my uh, podcast and uh, YouTube, ch YouTube channel. I, I think it was great talking to her. Um, I really appreciate your presence. And uh, it was much more than I, I expected from you, Elena. I thank oh, you a well, lot. Thank you. thank you so much for having me. Uh, yeah. It was a really nice Sunday <laughs> entertainment for me. Right. I just I want to wish you all the best for the rest of the year. Thank uh, you. For both bands. And uh, hopefully I will see you again in the U.S. Uh, one of these days, right? And uh, Absolutely, yes. It will be a pleasure to uh, see you and uh, hear all your music and seeing your beautiful face and your beautiful sound and everything else in between. Yeah, I really hope so. Hopefully soon. All right. So it was a pleasure. I thank uh, Elena Cirala for uh, talking to me, which it was a big uh, thing for me today to talk to her because... It's one of my favorite bands. I like a lot of music. I listen, you know, I interview jazz, uh, classical pianist, uh, violist, and all kinds of blues, rock. Uh, but heavy metal has always been something that I enjoy a lot. And I think Elena does a great job with their both bands, uh, Lip Size and Angel Nation. And I'll keep, uh, you know, waiting for new things that come out out of those two bands. and. 
projects that she has because she always doing different things and it's always uh, good to keep track. Just go to, uh, like everybody says, it's easy to find a uh, leaf size in school and you, you know about the band right away or Angel Nation, uh, Instagram, uh, Spotify, uh, iTunes, everywhere. And now it's easy to find them and uh, buying their things, merchandising from uh, Angel Nation, which I think they have uh, things that you can buy and buy the records, uh, all that. Everything is available now. You don't have to go to a record store and look for things. You could get them right away. So uh, that's what I do. <laughs> Thank you very much and see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks for, uh, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Oh!